Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Victoria 3, where we are playing as Ross Kasahailu of Gonder. Now, uh, when we last left, we were still working on expanding our, our treasury and expanding our administrative capacity. But in the meantime, let's uh, get back to that other kind of expanding and finish off that bit of shoe we forgot, because our truce is over. And we want to end it as soon as possible. And hopefully, once we're done with that, we can uh, we can start gearing up and seeing if a civil war will be necessary for us to get uh, the colonial affairs institution that we need. So, line up against Shua. Hopefully, hopefully, some neighbors will join. Our, arm, our army is now large enough from the force we've accumulated that no one is seri can now seriously threaten our ability to unite the peninsula. It, uh, the early goings do require some RNG, I have found in my experience, but at this point we're past the point where bad RNG can really stop us, unless Egypt gets involved, and I'm taking care of that. Uh, by boosting relations with them, so they won't even think of uh, going to war to stop us. We're, we're, I mean, after all, the uh, our pope lives there. Uh, we, we can't have we can't have them mad at uh, at comets uh, at the moment. We really can't afford it. So, let's see if anyone's leaning their way. No one, no one. They're all terrified. I'm willing to bet that they may actually surrender. We'll have to see. In any event, we may end up uh, getting to uh, unite Ethiopia this very episode. Come on, back down, you know you wanna. They did. Excellent. In the meantime, let's attempt colonial affairs again. I know our percentage is low, but we do need this as much as we surely do need more more uh, government administration. Let's build our admin up here. Yeah, so we'll have work to do. Very low chance of success here. We really do need that coal. Uh, I, I hope R N Jesus has the same energy for this that he did for uh, when I abolished serfdom, because this is just as important to the future of our country. Okay. Would revolt. Which provinces? Gonder itself would, with 40 units. That is the majority of our units. And the radical unit is critical. So they'd win. So who's, which groups are opposing it? It's the rural folk are the main basis of the opposition. So we're going to need to stop some hillbillies. If we want to join the uh, great powers of the world. to get that clout down. Like it is vitally important. Truly vitally important. So since we are now repressing the rural folk who are the primary opposition to colonial resettlement, hopefully, hopefully that will keep revolution from happening. Well, we may need to quiet down on further conquests until that point. 
but the Ethiopian miners will still be around, uh, and you know, no one's going to be taking them from us. Whereas, uh, starting in about the 1850s, 1860s, there are, there are going to be people uh, trying to keep the trying to keep uh, the the Rift Valley from us. So we need the Rift Valley. We need it badly. Well, we're, we, we still have a move, revolutionary movement to preserve no colonial affairs, but it is no longer at a point where it will necessarily fire. It could if things get worse, though. Yeah, it's at 63. Hopefully we get some good luck on the next tick. And it doesn't end up stalling. Okay, we have the ethics of exploitation here. Essentially, uh, uh, people in our capital are debating whether it's right, rather anachronistically, to, um, to uh, colonize other people. I mean, Menelik didn't have these qualms in real life. However, this increases our chance of a positive outcome over this one. So I'll concede some of their points, hopefully number goes up, it went down. Well, we're going to have to wait again. While we're waiting, though. Might as well try to expand again. We really do need colonial affairs. We need it so badly. If this, if this fails, it, it might tank the LP. If it fails, it might tank the LP. We certainly wouldn't be able to reach recognized nation status. The, the best we'd be able to do would be to get in a customs union and become... We, we, we'd get rich, but uh, we would never be able to be a recognized nation. So, for the sake of the LP, we are going to have to... Our stubborn, entrenched interests become a bit less entrenched, or a bit less stubborn. Well, we have international trade unlocked. That is not going to help us, though, until we have a sizable enough uh, industrialist cadre to join, to join the government and pass the law. We are still feudal. Yeah, no one seems interested in helping Williga. Good for us. Maybe we'll be able to uh, form that new tag at, by the end of the video, even if we can't get the colonial affairs institution that we really desperately need. And are going to have to wait for. And so Welliga, uh, Welliga backed down. So we've got a very, uh, very handsome-looking, uh, very handsome-looking state here, and we can end the era of the princes if we get Barana here. So, lacking anything else to do, I figure we press on. Yeah, it looks like uh, we're, we're so strong, we're terrifying our neighbors. Uh, now we have artillery.
line infantry will take care of itself. So, let's go with academia. We'll let us build universities once, once we have the time and building slots to do so, of course. We've still got to expand our lumber market. Ah, and their friends have joined, which is great for us. We can end this in one war. I'd rather not get Egypt involved if I, if I don't have to. And I don't think I do. Mobilized boys. And I think they should be able to advance as well. And after that, I think I'll be able to at least form that tag. And let the difficult matter of getting colonial affairs and perhaps wait for next video. Well, why not get our Somali foothold? We're going to need it uh, sooner or later. But this means we're going to also need a lot more uh, bureaucratic efficiency. Yeah, this is... Uh, this is the last war of the era of princes, the, uh, the last of the, the end of the Zemeno Pacifist. It is in our last days, and Castle Hailu will soon earn his name that the game has already given him of Tedros. It's this is the one piece. More hardline foreign policy. Yeah, let's get more approval from the armed forces. Egypt's declared that they're neutral, so I've got nothing to fear. They're really the only neighbor I need worry about at this point. So at that, so after this war, all of my worries for the next few decades probably are going to be mostly internal. Expensive uh, in the north doesn't seem to be going too well, but uh, this one will this one will go swiftly enough that I would bet it's not really going to matter. Need you to advance this front instead. Yeah, I should probably. Change their stance to defensive for now. Because that's not going well for us. Uh, yeah, I think we're at the point. We can and should at least be incorporating this. 
Yeah, like I said, we're going to need a lot more admin. Of course, this in turn is going to increase our government uh, budget. Okay, we've, uh, although we still have Harar left to conquer, we've, uh, by the, through the capitulation of, uh, of our enemy here, um, of Barana, we have been able to, uh, end, get, end the, uh, get the journal of, uh, we've been able to get the journal event for Era of Princes to, you know, fire, to go away. And so, this is going to be the last war of this hundred year long struggle for control over Ethiopia. Just these 30 against this 66 and uh, it's going to be a steady push uh, one that is ultimately going to end in victory for us. And I will skip ahead to that point when said victory happens. So uh, we'll talk to you then. Okay, our war is complete. We have conquered everything in our path, everything in the region. We have even secured ourselves a foothold on the Somali coast, which is going to be incredibly handy for getting us access to these iron mines. But we're going to need those coal mines as well. But before we do any of that, let us make it official. We have ended era of division and internal warfare within the old Ethiopian Empire. And then uh, added a little bit of extra Ethiopian Empire onto it. Areas like most of here and here, which were never really part of it. But never mind that, that's un not important. If Ethiopia is going to be worth fighting for, worth reuniting, if it is going to become a first-rate nation, it is going to need to expand. It is going to need to acquire resources to become, to become a country worthy of its flag. This, so we're going to form Ethiopia officially right now, and I think that is going to be a suitable end for this video. I will press this button, and now we have the this weird red, white, and purple thing that. I was not aware was ever used. Apparently, uh, Johannes used it briefly in the 1870s, but it's not clear. Uh, the attestation is kind of is kind of contradictory, but there are records that say that he used it. Uh, in any event, it wasn't a real national flag as such. They didn't have that until 1897. But I think it's fun that they included it as a weird detail. This obscure early flag to indicate that. Uh, we aren't quite the uh, modern Ethiopia you know yet, but we'll take some more steps toward that uh, toward that point next time. So until next time, I have been Marikati, you have been you. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you next time.